name is Melanie Cervantes, and I am an artist activist with Dignidad Rebelde. It's a collaborative art project that I founded with Jesus Barraza, um, my collaborator and part life partner. We decided that we wanted to create a project that allowed us to always work beyond the individual. And part of the way that we maintain that as a practice is to um, support organizations that do social justice work. As artists, the role that we feel that we can play is that we can create work that reflects the struggles, the dreams, and the visions of um, the people that are trying to change the world and that we can put that art back into their hands versus like art being something that's exclusively for people that have a lot of money. I'm also a program officer for a foundation called Akhenati Foundation. Um, so I've been working in philanthropy for getting close to 10 years now. Um, and in that role, I help to advise the family that gives out money to support organizations that are trying to impact the history of, of racism and the realities that we have to face as people of color. That's when I started my job at the Akhenati Foundation uh, as a program. Actually, at that point, was actually an assistant to the president of my foundation. And in the eight and a half years I've worked there, have worked my way up through several positions to now be a program officer. Um, and I'm responsible for about two and a half million dollars worth. In high school, I wasn't really prepared or encouraged to really think about a pathway for college. And so I went to community college um, briefly, but really didn't have a plan for what I was going to do. And so kind of dropped out fairly quickly and just um, threw myself into work. I worked in retail jobs. And I was really frustrated after five years of that work and decided that I needed to stop doing that and go to school because that was going to be the only way that I could advance. But once I went to my local community college, I met people from a program called the Puente Project. And the Puente Project is a community college-based program that helps bridge uh, RASA students to four-year universities. So I really got, um, just fell in love with ethnic studies and I did Chicano Chicana studies as an undergraduate and transferred to UC Berkeley to pursue a bachelor's degree in ethnic studies and I graduated with that degree in 2004 so I went to high school um, I think between the years of 1991 and 1995 and during those years um, in Southern California a high school called losing our high school um, I really you know reflect back now that I'm in Oakland and looking at some of the things that happened in Oakland Unified School District um, and understand the way that the institution of school really didn't prepare us to deal with the world in a productive manner um, because they weren't dealing with some of the root problems that were manifesting themselves and things like race riots. Like our school had the reputation of having race riots every year and every year that I went to school there there was a cover story in the local paper about it. And, um, you know, the condition, the way the conditions um, manifested themselves were things like there were more like military recruiters on our campus than there were camp counselors. And there were more police around the school than there were, you know, that I know for a fact that there were people who, um, you know, had more contact with, you know, police officers than they ever did with uh, their counselors. And, you know, they knew more about them as individuals than um, maybe they got to see a counselor once in their high school career. And, you know, the school is severely um, uh, under-resourced. I think in the, in the latter years, there were so many problems that like the following year after we graduated, the state took over the, the whole district. Uh, and I think, you know, the experience of being on a campus where um, the symptoms of violence were just so uh, severe. I think there was two shootings that resulted like in death on campus um, that I can remember that I was like 
you know, within a few hundred yards of, um, that when I look back and wonder why I didn't go to college straight out of high school, like, you know, that's one of several things that impacted, um, my ability to imagine a future. And well, the year that Prop 187, which was an anti-immigrant, um, legislation that was proposed was my junior year and that year um there was a lot of walkouts from from latino students um into the streets because their families were going to be impacted they were going to be impacted by this policy that would you know essentially make people like bus drivers and doctors like immigration enforcement and they're going to take away all these social services from the communities and um because people walked out, the school decided to put up these iron wrought fences and they would grease the fences so people couldn't get out. Um, and I remember, you know, seeing people try to leave. And, you know, when I, when I think about it, like, it's like how much that school resembled a jail and how much um, the young people, and I think especially the young men, we're kind of being prepared for that kind of future versus another future where they could imagine what they could contribute to their community. Um, the art and then my work within philanthropy have been vehicles for supporting groups of people that are being impacted, whether it's young people learning how to organize and, um, you know, fight for good food in their schools or, you know, young people fighting against curfews in Oakland as a response to um, bigger problems, um, like things like the gang and the things that drive me to do the work that I do is like understanding how we get marginalized and pigeonholed and um, the layers kind of, of oppression that happen in our everyday experiences.